Thank you very much, Minister Herta. Let me ask you a couple questions. Um, one on Avgas, as you know, um, general aviation community for my state, <coughs> for Senator Thunes, others, it's very important, the rural aspect of it, but the uh, EPA has issued an NPRM uh, on Avgas, and we've heard a lot of comments. I'm sure FAA has also heard a lot of comments, and, and uh, our concern is, and as you know, FAA is ultimately the responsible for certifying the type of gas that goes into aviation or into airplanes. And we are, I want to make it very clear that we are hopeful that there are no moves by EPA or FAA to phase out Avgas until there is truly an appropriate and economical drop in substitute fuel. Can you comment on that? Uh, Senator Begich, we share that concern. Avgas is unique. It is the remaining leaded fuel, but it meets the, requ the unique requirements that exist in general aviation. And the FAA uh, completely understands the importance of having reasonable alternatives before any effort is made uh, to phase out Avgas. I'm very committed to working with EPA so as to ensure that that doesn't happen. And when you say reasonable, uh, economical is part of that equation? It certainly. Okay, good. Uh, because it's, for us in Alaska, it's yeah. truly, it's the highway in the sky. It's critical that we have the right ability. And when we converted a much higher uh, level of leaded gas to unleaded, which was our vehicles, it took many, many, many years to do that. It wasn't overnight. And, and I'm worried that EPA has a different view of life here, that they can flip the switch and make it all magic. And I'm glad that you have made the statement you just said because I think you understand the FAA component of this and the aviation component of this. So thank you very much. And will you keep us, at least our office, informed kind of if there are some milestones that start occurring that we need to be aware of? Uh, because I, I guarantee you we'll hear it very quickly in Alaska, and uh, we want to make sure we're on top of this issue. Absolutely. We'd be happy to. Thank you. The other one is, um, and we have this battle on a fairly regular basis. The administration in the 13 budget had uh, $100 user fee on GA, uh, general aviation users, and you know I, I honestly think that is in, you know, you're, it's creating another system that doesn't need to be created. We have a per gallon tax assess that aviation community is supportive of. It's an already existing system. It works well um, to create another system where now it's $100 user fee for certain GA users. Uh, I think it's just going to be burdensome. It's going to create another bureaucracy within FAA, and the reality is we already have a system that general aviation supports and always works with FAA on. So can you comment on that? I know it's a budget issue, and I'm sure OMB has their views on it, but from a practical implication of how you implement it, it seems like it's just creating another system that we don't need when we have a user fee tax that people have been accustomed to. and. Uh, have been supportive in the past of adjusting when necessary. Uh, Senator Begich, the President put forward a proposal with the intent of uh, finding better ways to share the cost of the operation of the aviation system with the users of the system. And uh, that was why it was included in his proposal for the fiscal 2013 budget. Uh, the appropriators have not seen fit to act on that. And uh, we understand that how we look at the long-term financing questions of the FAA is something that we need to do very much in consultation with Congress, and we look forward to continuing that conversation with you. Great. I, I know from our end we'd obviously be happy to engage with you on that, and, and I think um, the general aviation folks, aviation in general, I think always are happy to, uh, if there's a process and they know the value comes back to the users in this case, uh, they're always willing to sit down and work these issues out, so I look forward to that. Um, do you, and I just want to follow up on what Senator Thune talked about on Next Gen, if I can, and that is just very quickly, and that is do you, you talked about the baselines, the three more to go. Um, if you were to say, uh, if you could give a percentage of where do you think you're at with full implementation of Next Gen in the level that we had asked for in the FAA reauthorization bill, and wh where would you say are we at 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent? Do you have a fair... And all the pieces, I know there's multiple pieces, but if you could take a, a 30,000 view looking down, where do you think we're at? I think it's important to look at it in the context of it, there, having, there being both a geographic component to it as we right. move it out across the country, and then uh, there are varying levels of capability that it enables. And we're making progress in both of those areas. 
we made a commitment to the industry to deploy one of the foundational technologies, um, a technology known as automatic dependent broadcast, uh, or automatic dependent broadcast, or surveillance broadcast, mm -hmm. ADS, automatic de dependent yes. surveillance broadcast, right. that it would be deployed throughout the country uh, by 2013, and we are on track to deliver the ground infrastructure by 2013. This, as you know, is a technology that we first deployed in Alaska. That's right. And what it gives a pilot is much greater situational awareness. It gives us a very precise view of what's happening in the airspace system, so we're well on track to delivery there. This year, we're giving a particular focus on performance-based navigation, more precise routes that reduce for airlines the uh, track miles flown and uh, enables them to reduce costs on fuel, and this is a high priority. What we're trying to do is reduce the deployment time for individual procedures from what would ordinarily be five to ten years down to three and sometimes two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing that in metropolitan areas all across the country. Later this summer, we will take a first step in deploying our Datacom program. Datacom is a transformational technology because what it addresses head on is one of our principal challenges for efficiency as well as for maintaining safety, and that is to ensure that uh, communications between controllers and pilots are accurate, precise, and in delivered in a timely fashion. And so we're on track for the delivery of that, pro for beginning the delivery of that program later on this year. We're making good progress, but I, I have to stress, it's a long-term delivery program that we have. We have milestones that go all the way out to 2025 for the delivery of NextGen, and uh, it's important to us that we hit those and deliver the benefits to the users of the right. system. Thank you very much. Thanks for your testimony. I'll look forward to supporting you in the final, but I just want to say thank you very much for coming here. Thanks for spending time with me uh, yesterday on all the other issues we talked about. Thank, thank you, thank Senator you. Beckett.